Hi, welcome back. I want to expand on something I talked about in a previous video about capacitors in parallel. So before we talked about how to add up the capacitance and the capacitive reactants in a parallel circuit containing capacitors. I want to expand a little bit further right now and just talk a little bit more about the voltage and the current in parallel circuits containing capacitors. What we should know or talk about, uh, voltage in a parallel circuit. It's great. So what happens is we see that the voltage across their source is actually going to be the same as the voltage in the first branch, same in the voltage in the second branch, and same in the voltage in the third branch. Our voltage is the same throughout. So what we do in an AC circuit when we're taking all this information to a phasor diagram, which can be very helpful for us to store our information and see those phase relationships, is we're actually now in a parallel circuit going to put voltage right as our reference line. That voltage is the same throughout the circuit. We can use it as a reference. We also know we're going to have values of current flowing through each of these individual branches. Now I've got the math done already for each of these branches. And now how we go about doing that is we say, well, if we're looking for the current in branch 1, we can call that I of capacitor 1. We know that's going to be the voltage of capacitor 1, which we know is the same as our source voltage, divided by the Xc of capacitor 1. Well, volts divided by ohms is our basic ohms law, and this case gives us 3.77 amps. So I did that for capacitor 1, the same for capacitor 2, only now it would be current for capacitor 2, voltage across capacitor 2, divided by Xc2. Well, we can do a few things now if we're looking for the total current. Uh, but before we do that, each of these currents flowing through the branches, when we want to take them to our phasor diagram to look at our phase relationships, well, in a capacitive circuit, we see our current is actually leading our voltage. Our voltage is lagging our current. So when we go to our phasor diagram here, we're actually going to see our current values drawn at positive 90 degrees. So we'll see I1, I2, and I3. Something like that. They're at positive 90 degrees because our voltage is lagging our current, or our current is leading our voltage by that 90 degree phase angle. Right? Perfect. When we're dealing with capacitors such as this, it's convenient for us because, because they're all occurring at positive 90 degrees, in order to get our IT, we can just add them up without using an HV chart, which we would have to use if they weren't all in line or in phase with each other. So we get IT equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. So we do the math. 3.77 plus 4.53 plus 5.28 gives us an IT of 13.57 amps. Now there could be a little rounding difference in there. Great. There's one other way we can check for a total current in this circuit, which we would find right here. Knowing that the current is added up, but we can also go do something like this. I total equals E total over XC total. We know our XC total from before is 17.7, so we can do 240 volts divided by that, and we end up with 17. the same number as before. So that's kind of how voltage and current work together in a circuit containing only capacitors. We'll definitely get into some more videos later on dealing with different types of circuit properties in a circuit. Thanks for watching.